Welcome to another lesson in our TIGZ training course. Today, we're going to create an application using TIGZ and PhoneGap capabilities. Also, we're going to be using the data mapping feature. In this episode, we will create a user interface, create a contact service, and use data mapping in the Visual Builder. Then you'll receive some instructions on how to install the Android SDK, Eclipse, and the ADT plugin. And in the end, we will test our application on a virtual Android device. In step one, we'll create the user interface, create the contact service, and use data mapping in the Visual Builder. First, let's create our app. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to call it Contacts. We just click Create after that. And then we're going to go to the Start screen when this comes up. There we go. Let's create the UI for our app. First, what we're going to do is we're going to change the caption. So let's select it and then type in a new one over under Properties. We'll change it to Contacts List. Then we're going to go to the Components List and drag over a list item. And we're going to select it and then set it so that it only shows one item. Then we're going to drag three labels over so that this will be the contact. Each contact will be represented by these three labels. So we drag them over and then we set them each to uh, the first one to be contact name. And then we're going to name the second one contact organization and uncheck the visual property to make it hidden. There we go. Okay. And then for the third label, we're going to name it um, contact phone, and we're also going to make it hidden by unchecking the visual property. Now it's time to add a new service. Okay, let's create a new service now. Let's create new, then select service, and in the dialog, we'll select a device service called contacts. Right. Now this service uses PhoneGap's um, contacts.find method to provide access to the device contacts database. So let's go to the request tab. Here we have search options that, to filter contacts. Let's go to the responses tab now and here we have the response which contains the properties that describe a contact such as a user's personal or business contact. Now we can go ahead and map the service to the UI. So let's go to the start screen. We'll select a device data source called contact service. Click add and let's edit the mapping. You can map response or request data. We don't have any request parameters, but on the request tab, we do have the default request parameters that will get all the contacts. Now let's map the response to the UI. On the right-hand side, you can see all the UI components we created before for our contacts. And on the left-hand side, you can see the um, components from the, uh, in the response structure. So let's do the mapping of the appropriate response parameter to the appropriate component. There. OK. And one more. And to make our contact list repeating once per array entry, we, sh we need to drag and drop the results array into the mobile list item element. There you have it. Now you, have a, you can see all the data items mapped to the UI. To make our search run, we need to create a submit button. So go to the design tab, take a button from the components list, and place it over the mobile list component. Then go to the Properties and change its displayed text to Get Contacts. Also, you're going to set its name value to, um, we'll say, Get Contacts without any space. Now 
Next, we're going to select the search button, go to the events panel, and select invoke service. And then uh, contacts one will be the ser target service. Uh, we don't actually, we only have one service in this app, so we didn't rename it. But usually you would give something like that a more meaningful name. Now hit add event. The next step we're going to do is to create a page that will represent a single contact. So we go to create new and page. We name it contact. And there. Then we hit create page. And there we have our new page. At first, we're, the first thing we're going to do is change its screen caption to contact. Now we're going to take a grid component and drag and drop it onto the screen. Let's go to properties and set its rows to three. Now we're going to take three label components and place them in each row of the uh, at the first column. We'll select the first one and change its text to name, so that's what gets displayed. And then we're going to set the display text for the second one to be organization. And for the third one, we'll call it phone, or we'll have it display the text phone. Now we're going to take another three label components and put them in the second column, opposite each of these previous labels. Let's select the first one and change its name property to name. For the second one, we'll call it organization, obviously. There we go. And then we'll, the last one will, of course, be phone. Now we're going to select the screen caption and we're going to create a back button for it. Now go back to the start screen and select the mobile list item element. We're going to go to the events panel and select nav navigate to page as an action and from the pages list we'll select contacts and click add event. And now we're going to create three local storage variables to store the contact name, organization, and the contact phone from the contact list item. So select local set local storage variable from the action list. Our first one will be underscore name, so let's type that in. We'll check bind a component, and the target component will be contact name. And let's click add event. Let's go back and do set local storage variable again. And we will, this time it'll be underscore organization as the variable name. Check the bind to component and target component is contact organization. So add that. Okay, now we're going to do set local storage variable again, one last time. Let's set the variable name to underscore phone, by, click bind to component, and from the target component list we select contact phone. Now we're going to go to the contact page. Here we have to set values that's, that, we're going, that we store into the local storage, the corresponding fields. So go to the events panel, select contact as the component, load event, and set property as the action. So, so we select name, text, and underscore name as the value to be read in. Then we add the event. Okay, let's do this again. We're going This time we're going to set the property um, for organization using the appropriate local storage variable. We'll save that. And after we've um, added this event, we're going to do it one more time, setting a prop property for phone. It'll be set um, to read the local storage variable that's called underscore phone that we set up before. And all we have to do is click this, add this event, and then we'll be done with our app. And we can move on to the testing phase. We'll save it. Before we get on to testing, though, we need to go through the setup for testing. This is the software you'll have to install. And you must install the software in the order that as listed. You can download the software and find installation instructions at the links below each item. 
Now is the time we've been waiting for, actually testing our app. In order to test our app, uh, we have to export it as an Eclipse project. So click Export as Eclipse Project from TIGZ. Um, then you just open the downloaded archive and extract the contacts folder where you want it. We only need this folder here, and so we put it on the desktop. Now we launch the AVD Manager. Here I have a virtual Android device. If I wanted to create a new device, I would just click New and set the Android device properties. I'm going to launch this existing device, so select Device, click Start, and Launch. You can read more details about how to create a new virtual Android device at this link. All right, here we go. All right, so the, the device is launched, so go to Contacts, and you'll see that we have some contacts there. You could also have added new contacts to your virtual device before. All right. Okay, let's um, run Eclipse now and go to File, Import. In the open window that appears, we're going to select the Android folder and existing Android code into the workspace. In the next window, we'll browse and set the destination to the Contacts Project folder, and then we'll click Finish. All right, and then we select our Project folder in Eclipse, and in the Context menu, we select Android Tool, and then the Fix Project Properties option. Okay, um, expand the project folder, then expand the assets folder and the www folder, and you can find all the files of your project, and if you need to, you can edit them. Now we are going to test our application. Let's click Run as Android Application, and select an Android device right there. Okay. Now you can see our application is loading, and it's loaded. Now click the Get Contacts button, and as you see, it gets contacts from our device. Now you can click any contact and see detailed information about it. There. Uh, go back and try it again. There. So now you can see that the app has been built, how it's been built, and we've tested it. Um, and um, that's about it for right now.